Greetings from the workshop. Quick update as part of the ongoing series about how to do bikes. In front of you, 1977 Kawasaki Z1000A1, and just a quick front end, basically refresh on the brakes. This particular bike didn't come with any brake system, so we've got a reproduction master cylinder that's fitted to the front. And if you look down on the floor, we've got the brake hoses that are going to the calipers, which you can see just here, which are loosely fitted to the bike. So these have all been blasted and refurbished, new kits, new seals, new pistons, new mounting hardware. So the final piece of the puzzle is to connect the front master brake cylinder to the splitter and the splitter to the pipes that then connect to the calipers. So let's crack on. You can do it one of two ways. You can start at the handlebar and work down, which is the way I would normally do it. But today it's backwards day because it's the end of the year, so I start from the caliper up. Hardline brake pipe. Uh, this is supplied by the folks at Z1 Spares in Tasmania, so great job. This is bent and flared exactly as the originals would have been. And we fit it off like this into the top of the caliper. You can see the pipe bends around like this. We're going to fit these in finger tight. And just so you can see on the front there, we're going to fit these in finger tight. And then the hose fits through this little bracket here. That holds for the speedometer, which speedometer cable comes down and connects there. And the brake line comes through this bracket there. And this is your brake line. So that gives us a screw fitting here and that connects to this piece of threaded line there. So we'll just get that in play. So feed it up. This rubber grommet will become our nemesis for the moment. And then you want to slide that back and into that hole, just like that. And it'll want to connect as soon as you get it in correctly. So again, we're just fitting this in loosely. And then the rubber, rubber grommet comes up over the top, if you can get it to move, which we'll fix in just a sec. Okay, so same on the other side. Same thing, so pre-bent pipe. This comes as a kit, left and right. Behind the fork stanchion. Just hang on to it that side. And we're going to, since I'd normally do this left-handed, but it's a little bit difficult to do it right-handed. In fact, what I'll do, operates the camera. Let's just fit this off this side. And that should go in. That can be a little fiddly. There we go. And same thing on this side again. So this end's going up to the splitter, that end's getting connected. So through there, put the rubber grommet through, connect that up to the end of the brake line. Oops, there we go. Connect that up to the end of the brake line. Just get that in loosely. Okay. Next up, we're going up to the splitter. So, brake line bolts with new copper washers. Always fit new copper washers. Brake line splitter on this one mounts just in front here. So, the bottom triple tree has two holes. I've already fitted the electrical switch. So this is a pressure switch that tells you when the front brakes have got pressure. This just gets held in place with two bolts. That's gonna go on the front there. And again, we're just fitting this loosely, make sure everything lines up. So first one in, second one in. Now we're going to connect the lines from the bottom. So first one comes in here. Very important to note that the curved back of the supply line has to fit into the notch in the back of the splitter. So you're just gonna come in and fit like this. You can't fit it any other way and it doesn't fit over there. 
So always this side and that curve back fits in there. And then you're gonna come in, new copper washer, very important. One on top, one underneath. And in we go. And again, just going in finger tight for the moment. This will all get nipped up before we run fluid into it. Okay, we'll slide around to the other side, same thing. There we go. So again, back of the brake line has a hard fitting. We're gonna sandwich the copper washers between the fitting and the curved back of the brake line goes into the notch on the back of the splitter. Pretty straightforward. Fairly common sense, but worth pointing out because occasionally we see bikes in here, as you've seen on some of the other videos where people don't use the common sense approach and things don't end up going well. So we are just about there. Okay, so that's finger tight all the way around. So that's roughly what you should be looking for. This, this shouldn't rub. There should be clearance between the fork stanchion and the hard brake line. This has a rubber boot here that will slide up over the top and will fit into this stay. That's your speedo cable again. And it should be a gentle curve. And you can see that there's no binding. It's not kinked on anything. It's just a gentle curve back from the splitter down to the caliper. So that's what it should look like. And then obviously just back here, that's your electrical connection for the brakes. So there's no particular polarity as long as you've got your blue and brown connected there for the front brake indicator, then you're good. And final piece of the puzzle on this one is just fitting the supply cable from the brake master cylinder down to the splitter, which is here. So let's do that. So always fit rubber boot because this element over here is exposed, or this is exposed to the element. So it needs a rubber boot to cover up the base of the brake bolt and protect from elements either side. And this splitter doesn't get a rubber boot. So that's the way you know how it works. So if you look on the top here, worth pointing out, on the Z1000, there's a little hook you probably just see my finger if I pop it down there. It's a little hook. This brake line has to fit behind the hook so it doesn't move. So we're just going to slide that down now. And then it's it tends to want to get hung up behind the headlight bucket. So while it is possible to do it, you'll see me do it now. Uh, it's probably not the most convenient way to do it. It's better if you've got the headlight bucket off. So we'll do that for the minute. And again, on this side, new copper washers. Don't be cheap, just keep a bucket of these in stock. You, you can reuse the original bolts, even give them a little polish up, but just make sure if you do polish them, any loose debris from uh, anything like a cloth uh, or any of that sort of stuff needs to be got rid of before you do anything else. You do not want debris going into the brake master cylinder. Got the wrong bolt on here, I think. One sec. Oh no, it is the right one. There we go. Just a little bit tight in there. What I might do is give myself a half a turn on here. Okay. And we're gonna go here. So same thing again. Copper washer through the bolt. Copper washer on the other side. Just squish that down there, there we go. And you can see that's now going into the brake master cylinder. These are marked as well. So you can see very, very quickly if you've got the correct size cylinder. Worth noting on this as well, there's no lock to hold this in place. This is just as the cable wants to be routed. So all the other connections have a little lock in there to hold them in place. This top one doesn't, gives you a little bit of adjustment. That's a good thing because these are typically a little bit fiddly to get in. So that's finger tight again. 
There's my rubber boot over the top. So this is what it should look like. And again, this is only temporarily fitted for the purposes of the video. We'll go back and tighten all of this up. So when it's installed, it should look like this. It should have a rubber boot over the top, which should protect the back of the fitting. Um, you want it to come down and cover the base here. So this crimp fitting needs to be covered. Spring is just to protect it. So that's now completely weather resistant. And if we get this one back in the picture, just need to pull this out a little bit further. It's being camera shy, so it doesn't want to move. Sorry, not the most gripping viewing in the world. Actually, I'm going to undo this piece of work. Just pull that out. You go. Yeah, there we go. So that's now going in. And again, you've got a little spot in here which has got a lock, little notch for the uh, for the body of the pipe. Just going to keep screwing that all the way in. You can see that now will not move. That will not move from the brake splitter and you definitely don't want it to move because this is where all of the fluid will be coming out under pressure from the brake master cylinder so that's finger tight we'll do these back up again and this it's obviously only in loosely but this is how it should look on a 70s so this is true for about 76 so just like this bike right here which is a 76 z 900 a4 has a very very similar setup you can see on the front master and front front caliper there this bike is a 77 the 78s are the same and then we move to a similar but slightly different assembly for the 79 so once you know one system you know pretty much all the systems that go right the way through from the mid 70s all the way to about 1980 so the year last year this was made was 1980. Um, one final piece of housekeeping when you connect your electrical connections to the back of the brake master switch again this is an electromechanical switch just operated by brake pressure moving a little actuator there's a rubber boot that needs to be fitted around this which you can see on the 79Z1000 Mark II. That's that black rubber boot just to the right of the splitter. That is again, good housekeeping, makes the joint weather resistant, not weather proof, but weather resistant. Um, so basically always install those to make sure that your brake circuit is adequately protected and operates as designed. So there you go, that's a quick, install of the front end of our braking system these are just worth noting completely independent systems so this brake system doesn't have anything to do with the rear brakes so this system is dual disc single pad uh, on each side of the disc so four four pads two discs and the one in the back is a single disc as well so not a bad system for a bike that was built in 1977. Well done, Kawasaki, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, everybody.